For the past 39 summers, Craig Fellin has run the Big Hole Lodge, guiding anglers on southwest Montana's world-class rivers. It's where he passed down his love of fly fishing to his son, Wade. I'll never forget my senior year of high school thinking I was going to have another summer of mowing the lawn, doing dishes, and fishing every day. And Dad said, you have two weeks to learn the oars, you're guiding. And so for the past 17 years, I've been a guide at, at Big Hole Lodge and, and working alongside my father. So, Craig and Wade now co-own the lodge, which sits about eight miles from its namesake, the Big Hole River. The free-flowing blue ribbon trout fishery is nicknamed the last best river. It supports the last naturally producing population of fluvial Arctic grayling in the lower 48. And it's beautiful. It's pristine. Cows, not condos, with a river running through it with wild trout. Four species of Montana's wild trout that haven't been stocked since the 70s. That's like a whole different sport when you catch a wild trout as opposed to a hatchery fish. So they're, they're sustaining their populations within that beautiful river. And it's worked really well until now. This spring, Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks released data showing that numbers of brown and rainbow trout are at or near historic lows in certain stretches of the Big Hole, Beaverhead, and Ruby Rivers. The felons and other guides have increasingly seen diseased fish covered in growths and lesions. The declines are steepest in the Big Hole, which is now the center point of growing concern over the health of the three rivers that form the Jefferson. Angling on these rivers accounts for a large chunk of Beaverhead County's $167 million outdoor recreation economy. Felon says the fishing is still good, but that the declines have affected business. I had a client leave two weeks ago and say, good luck with all of this. I hope you figure it out. I hope we can come back someday when it, it fishes better. The felons believe that they have a responsibility to help preserve these rivers. Due in part to Craig's experience as a founding member of the Big Hole Watershed Committee and Wade's as program director at the Upper Missouri Waterkeeper, the two have been active in representing a conservation-minded contingent of the Big Hole's outfitting community. We can't just sit on our hands. We have to do something, and we feel that it truly is an all-hands-on-deck moment. While this year's data surprised people, trout numbers have been steadily declining for the past decade. Brown trout in the Melrose section of the Big Hole dropped from over 1,800 fish per mile in 2014 to just under 400 this year. Eight, three. FWP fish biologist Jim Olson says it's strange that the brown trout are struggling Five, because they are generally Montana's most resilient trout species. They should be the ones that are doing the best, and they're the ones that are, 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 are basically crashing right now. So. They know many factors are at play, but right now, experts are still trying to determine the primary drivers behind the declines. We don't have the information to be able to say definitively if that's what it is. What FWP can say definitively is that the amount of water is playing a major role. Historically, flow has been the main driver of our fish populations. When we have really good flow um, throughout the whole year, we see really good recruitment. Recruitment is the process of young small fish becoming older larger fish. The last couple of years has been, have been okay recruitment years, still below average, but the three previous years before that have been very, very low. And now that's led to now the lowest numbers that we have on record. Data in the 2017 Montana Climate Assessment shows that historically, yearly snowpacks are declining and that that snow is melting earlier. That can mean less water that warms up earlier in the year. Not ideal for trout that thrive in strong and cold water. It can also increase the chance of harmful algae blooms, not uncommon on the big hole in recent years. When you have a bloom and it begins to die off, you've got the process of decomposition consumes all the dissolved oxygen around. Less dissolved oxygen negatively impacts reproduction and growth of fish. Brian Wheeler, who heads the Big Hole River Foundation and works as a fishing guide, says that these low flow, high temp conditions aren't unique to the Big Hole. We look at the Missouri and the Madison 
They still struggle with algae blooms. They still struggle with high water temperatures. They got three times as much pressure, fishing pressure, as the big hole does, and they're not seeing those declines. That fact points to the possibility of a new disease. Wheeler and Felon say they've been seeing diseased fish since 2014, when an outbreak of saprolignia fungus caused a major die-off. The population declines really started you know, those first couple of years of fungus. But Wheeler says whatever is killing fish now appears to be different from what caused the die-off in 2014. I mean, we're seeing things we never saw those years. We're seeing open lesions on the heads, um, what people have started to call the cheese grater heads. Wheeler says it would make sense to see sick fish at the end of the summer when water is low. But that hasn't been the case in recent years. We're not just seeing it in October, we're seeing it in June, when there's a ton of cold flow in the river. That is really strange. It doesn't add up. Healthy fish can fight off fungus. It's when they're under additional stress, like another disease or poor water conditions, that they become vulnerable to it. It's generally a secondary uh, infection. And so we're trying to find out if there is a, a primary infection or if that um, stressor is environmental that they're experiencing that makes them susceptible. In June, FWP announced a concerted effort to find answers about the declines. A multi-pronged study was launched, looking at disease, recruitment, and adult fish survival. Fish experts did some early sampling in July, electrofishing the Jerry Creek section of the Big Hole. When the electrode hits the water, it creates an electrical current that the fish are drawn to. The goal is to find sick fish when they're still alive and collect samples immediately after they're killed. The quickly preserved samples will be sent to a histopathologist to look for signs of disease at the microscopic level. But conclusions are a ways away. FWP's studies will take four to five years to complete. In that time, though, other groups will also be working to bring answers to light. No one organization is responsible for this, and no one organization can quickly solve this. In June, Felon announced the formation of Save Wild Trout, a privately funded group of guides, anglers, and businesses. And what Save Wild Trout hopes to do is identify what we feel are gaps in, in data collection and privately fundraise, bring that data together with expert scientists that can wrap it up in a bow and bring it to the state to help inform their management decisions moving forward. In August, Save Wild Trout named Dr. Kyle Flynn as their lead scientist. He's the first of a team of scientists they're planning to form. Dr. Flynn is gathering water chemistry and dissolved oxygen data at locations where FWP has long-term population data. Right over there, the, the beaverhead comes in from Twin Bridges. and the Save Wild Trout's work will add to the growing data set already being built by Wheeler, who has run the Big Hole River Foundation's water quality program since it began in 2020. Eleven times from April to October, Wheeler and volunteers sample 10 sites along the Big Hole and its tributaries, collecting a variety of data and logging hundreds of miles each trip. One of his key measurements is the levels of excess nutrients, mainly phosphorus and nitrogen. Excess nutrient pollution fuels harmful algae blooms. Wheeler's also studying how water quality affects trout's main food source. All these issues that we're seeing are not just impacting trout population levels, they're impacting the bugs as well. This is Wheeler's fourth year collecting bug data. And by December, he and a group of entomologists in Manhattan plan to release a report detailing their findings. One of the first of its kind on the big hole to try and establish what does baseline bug health look like. Like the trout, certain aquatic insect species are also in decline. And so when you start to see these declines and shifts, you know, it affects everything from there on up. Save Wild Trout and the Big Hole River Foundation share the same goal of helping to inform the state as they make decisions. You know, the whole project is designed to be complementary to agency work. According to Region 3 Fisheries Manager Mike Duncan, FWP does plan to use this outside data moving forward. In the short term, 
One question is whether this year's good water conditions will have a positive effect on trout numbers. So when conditions are favorable, we see really fast population expansion. Fish born this year won't be big enough to show up in population sampling until next year or the year after. But long term, larger questions about water use, recreation, and climate change will be more difficult to answer. I think what makes it so compelling in the big hole is that we're at the headwaters of the Missouri, you know, one of the great river systems on Earth. The headwaters are supposed to be clean, they're supposed to be pristine and pure. Craig's love of the outdoors and his will to protect it are alive and well in Wade. They believe that quick action is required to reverse these declines. So pooling resources and bringing people together now while we know the resource is on its knees, but it's not dead. So that his son can have the same sort of retirement that he'll have. Wade is going to take over here and I'll, I'll be able to go fishing a little more. For Impact, I'm Joe Lassar.